Hey, how's everybody doing? It's Simon Steele, and we're about to go over some more um, information that will help us be financially literate because we really want to fo focus on improving our financial literacy because some things they just aren't going to teach in the school. So we have to make sure that we take time out and teach our family, teach our kids these principles because they're going to need them as they continue to grow in life. So be patient with me. I'm excited about this lesson because we've been talking about getting to this point for about a month. You know, we had a challenge on how to prepare and get your budget ready for about a month now. And the deadline was June 10th. And now it is June 11th. So I'm excited about getting ready to post this video to the website to help people I'm sorry, to uh, my YouTube channel, which I would love for you to subscribe to and uh, help people be able to improve their budget now that they've been crunching the numbers for a whole month because you start finding out stuff that you didn't realize. And so as we look at this, we understand that we're going over budget principles. And like I told you earlier, please subscribe, support the uh, YouTube channel, the budget. We wanted to find out where the money was going. And like I mentioned, uh, what was found on your journey? What surprised you? What did you say? You know what? I really need to fix that. I didn't realize it was that bad. I didn't realize it was that out of hand. Uh, so as you see, as you deal with a budget, it takes time. It takes discipline. And sometimes you don't even get everything in that first month. Sometimes it takes about two to three months to really figure out and have a good estimate of what's really going on. So, you know, it's June the 11th. Uh, the deadline was June 10th. Uh, if you need some more time, take it and then catch this video and get on board. All right. What surprised you? Did you find out that you eat out more or you eat more fast food than what you realize? Or you spend a lot of money at the gas stations than, re than you realize? All right. Let's go to this point. Um, let's deal with your incoming. So when we deal with a budget, we have to find out what's coming in. What is our cash flow? What assets actually bring money in, whether it be rental property or uh, it could be something else. What is your cash flow? What is coming in? And also you have to go find out what your liabilities are. What's coming out? What are those bills? What are those things that are causing you to spend money, to lose money, to uh, have to swipe your card for? So we have our assets and we have liabilities. We have our incoming, we have our outgoing. And um, so it should be interesting because what you really want is you want your income, you want your cash flow to be more or greater than those liabilities. If you have that situation, then you can actually make progress. We can start building up our savings. We can start preparing for emergency funds. And that means we'll also be able to pay some bills if we have some liabilities, if we have some credit cards, if we have things that are holding us up, uh, we can knock those out with the excess, with the extra that we have the, at the end of the month. So that once we knock those out, then our cash flow, we get to keep in our pocket and then we'll have even more progress at the end of the month. Now, uh, issue, which is good reason to do a budget, you need to find out, and hopefully that's not the case, hopefully your cash flow is not less than your liabilities. You don't want to have more liabilities than you do cash flow because that means you're going to have debt you're going to be in the red and that is a problem. So if that is the case, don't panic because all that means is we need to find where in the budget that we can cut back, which is why I really wanted to focus on doing a budget so that you will see what you have and what you can improve on. Now, there's some people who are going to have the progress, but just because you have progress and you have more coming in than you do leaving out doesn't mean that you still can't make uh, some improvements so that we can have a greater amount coming in. And so what we're going to quickly do is go over two tools that may help you with this process of verifying the budget and improving your budget, giving your budget a little accountability and some good numbers to base certain things on so that you can move properly with your money. So two things that we want to go over, two tools that we're going to use to improve our budget is the 50, 30, 20. This is the first thing we're going to go over. The 50, 30, 20 rule. The 50, 30, 20 rule tells us that 50% of our money should go a certain place. 30% of our money should go a certain place and 20% should go somewhere. 
So the 50%, what that details is those are your needs. So let's say 50% uh, of your funds should go to your needs, like your mortgage or your rent, um, those utility bills, car insurance, health insurance, life insurance, those needs. 50% of your money should be going to that point. 30% of your money goes to your wants, like new shoes, Netflix, a vacation, you know, etc. Those things, the things that you don't have to have, that should only be 30% or less. And last, 20%, the 20% should be going to your savings. Um, it could go to retirement, investment, creating and building an even bigger emergency fund, especially if you have progress, if you have more coming in than you do coming out. Um, or some of that 20% can go to paying off debt. So you have your 50, 30, 20 rule. Let's use an example. Let's say uh, Jimmy makes $3,000 a month. Here's our example. If he makes $3,000 a month, then that means by this rule, $1,500. Ooh, that's bad. I got one too many zeros on there. So let's look at it like this. $1,500 will go to Jimmy's needs. $900 will go to Jimmy's wants. And $600 will go to savings. The total of that is $3,000. So that's how the 50, 30, 20 rule would go for Jimmy if he brought in $3,000 a month. So keep that rule in mind. Crunch your numbers. Let's see what we got. Because you did a budget, you'll easily be able to see if you're within the 50, 30, 20 rule. Let's see how close you are. You might be at 51, 29, 22. You never know. So let's see where you're at there. Next. The next tool that we're going to use to improve our budget is the envelope system. How many people have heard of the envelope system? The envelope system is beautiful because if you said you had a budget and you say that you only spend certain amount of funds each month for it, the envelope system will let you know whether or not you're telling the truth or if you're a liar. So the envelope system is beautiful. I love it. I use it for basically two different uh, types of bills. But the envelope system, it keeps you disciplined. It helps you um, verify your numbers, everything that you've calculated or estimated or you hold to be true concerning your budget. The envelope system will let you know if you're right or not. So with the envelope system, I want to create an envelope challenge. So we're going to have an envelope challenge and you're going to have two months to perfect this envelope system and see if it works for you to see if your numbers were right. The envelope challenge will last and we're going to go all the way to July 31st with that. So here's the envelope system. Let's say you spent, you said in your budget that you spent a thousand dollars a month on groceries slash food. Well, the envelope system, if that is true, you take a thousand dollars, you place it in an envelope and you let everybody in the family know that, listen, Anytime we go to the grocery store, we use the money from this envelope. There'll be a thousand dollars in it and we'll slowly use that thousand dollars throughout the month. The other great uh, tool to use of uh, bill to pay with the envelope system is the gas. So whenever you go get gas, you get the money out of the envelope to fill up the car. Do not swipe the card. Only use the money in the envelope and you put the amount of money in the envelope that you say you use a month. If you use $500 for gas a month, put $500 in there and we'll see at the end of the month if you use $500 or not. Now, here's the beautiful thing. You could be wrong. Maybe you use $450, but at the end of the month, you might have an extra $50 left in there. So if you got any bills, you throw the $50 on the bill or you leave in the envelope and you re-up for the next month. The envelope system is beautiful. Same thing with your groceries. If you use $1,000 for groceries, you only use 800 of it because you decide to use coupons and some other things. You got 200 extra dollars, throw it on the bill, knock that out, or you leave it in there, you re-up another $1,000 for the next month. By the end of the year, if you continue to save money in that envelope system, you have extra investment money or you have money that you can throw at a bill, a credit card, or whatever it is that you're trying to knock out so that you can have progress and continue to have more than less. So the envelope system is the next challenge that we're doing for the next two months. Uh, June is kind of going by. You can still make adjustments, find out what you spent already, and then balance it out. 
So that's the next challenge. We're going to improve our budget. We're going to make our budget amazing. We just have to be patient and continue to work at it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. You can give some advice as well. Uh, also in the comment section, please subscribe, like the video, and we'll continue to work together to build a dynasty, to build an empire, to be able to leave a legacy. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, make contact. God bless and thank you.